Hey everyone, it's Phil here from Ashland Leather. Today we're visiting Grantstone all the way here in Baroda, Michigan. I drove across a couple state lines to visit here with, with everybody. Okay guys, so here we are. We're in Baroda, Michigan, all the way southwest Michigan. We have CJ's corner store at the very end. We have our warehouse here, the post office. So anytime we sell those beautiful Ashland wallets, we walk them down there. <laughs> and then uh, public house brewery at the end. This is it. Everything in so why don't you guys show us inside the uh, warehouse? What are you guys go going awesome. on here? Let's do yeah, it. Let's take a look. You guys come every day. Picks up over here. Lock. Shipping out some Grandstone boots. These UPS guys are the best. One of these days, I'll have to, I'll have to see what's in these boxes. <laughs> right now, the way it's set up is we have two warehouses, just kind of one for the inventory and then one for the packing you know, polishing, inspecting, and, and shipping. All right, guys, Parker and Wyatt, hey, why don't you show me welcome, uh, welcome. your collection warehouse here of incredible boots yeah, and shoes. This is the first, um, this is kind of the first warehouse that we mm -hmm. came in and we're doing everything out of here originally. Now it's just mainly inventory. So starting with kind of the oldest styles we had, which I think the, the very first one was the Bridgetown Longwing. Mm. That's the first one all the way down to some of our newer newer stuff, like the chuckas and all that. You know what maybe we should do is grab some of the old stuff and do yeah. like a lineage of, of Grant Stone, would be kind of fun. Absolutely, awesome. yeah. Let's get a, uh, do we have a, these. That black diesel boot with the leather sole, I think that you're trying to uh, yes. pick up. Yes, I yeah. saw that black chrome Excel diesel boot. Parker, where is that 42702? 42702 is right here. And what's your best seller, is it, or did we just pull it? Right now, that'd be the Crimson Diesel boot. Grab our Forest Kudu uh, green cat toe boot. How many Chrome XL boots is too many Chrome XL boots, you think? I don't think you can have enough, really. Okay, we're bringing out the big guns to get this yeah. one. So how many, you know, of each style, I noticed that there's just so many boxes here. Yeah. What? Do, how many do you try to keep in stock at, at one time of each item? That's a tough one to answer because it's a moving target for us. Um, it's never, it's always kind of changing a little bit. Um, but the hard part is, is probably the widths just because if, if we do DE and triple E, that's 42 variants. So that's the tough part. Probably 150 per, per style for what we do to keep in stock mm -hmm. because it can take up to nine, 10 months to get them back in. And Parker, yeah. what, what do you do if, uh, you know, if you don't have a size for somebody? So right now we don't do made to order or anything custom like that. But the biggest thing, if you see something's not in stock, you can go onto our product page right there, enter your email there, and once that gets restocked, you'll get a notification right away, hey, this is back in stock. And a lot of times too, like for example, I wear a 12D in our collection, but I also wear an 11 half E. I can kind of move around widths like that. So if you're looking, you don't have a 12D in stock, you can always look at a different width. By the way, what's your favorite Grandstone pair? The Ivory Suede Plain Toe. Nice. Which we don't have anymore, but I love that shoe. <laughs> How about you, Josh? Shoe. What's your favorite? <laughs> yeah, well, I brought out my Ivory Suede. Yeah. Yes, I love. I do just love the Penny Ivory Suede loafers. for some reason. So I figured I'd break the rest in peace Penny Loafers. <laughs> You're not going to make these again? No, not right now. That Ivory Suede's gone and moved into a different suede. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I've ever asked. You like the loafers, right? Yeah, if I yeah recall but correctly. I think you could appreciate why we don't make it anymore. They're, they're just too, they're too difficult. They get dirty. Yeah. They get really dirty. The so ivory. Like, yeah. 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 And, and I mean, honestly, you know, that's being, I mean, you can do them, but it's, it's a very, very tough one. So if we bring them back, it'll probably be like limited release, something like that, because it's really tough. It's tough to keep clean. Like anything white suede, if you see people who offer white suede, it's not easy. Do you guys mm -hmm. feel like uh, light colors are more popular than darker colors? No, they're actually, and also they're not good sellers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, I, I, I feel like at least for the, the leather world that I'm in, I'm wearing natural yeah. Dune Chrome Excel diesel boots right now. I feel like a lot of people really want like the leather look, which mm -hmm. is browns, dark yeah, browns, whatever. Exactly. Do you think people are more into extra dark browns or light browns? Like, I don't know. Natural Chrome Excel, maybe the most popular diesel or uh, Dune Chrome Excel, I should say. It's tough. It's probably, I mean, we seem to break it up like, if it's if it's someone who's an enthusiast of like leather, they tend to go for the light colors, the veg tan, the natural chrome excel. Interesting. Um, but in general, I mean, people really like black. They yeah. like Havana brown, which is the crimson. The Let's get a round table of souls. What's your soul choice? Do you have a soul um, choice? I do like the uh, our rugged outsole, the lug sole. Lug sole on the 
uh, Floyd last. That's on that one of one. the more newer sole offerings from you guys. Is that? That is right? newer, yeah. yeah on the brass, brass boot. boot. Yeah. Yeah, six months actually. Sole yeah. for you, Josh? Sole for me. Ever since we've been going, I've been pushing Wyatt to add some rubber options, and uh, you know he snickers because yeah, I've been working on that lug sole for uh, the last <laughs> three, four years with him, and so excited to see that. Excited to see a couple rubber options, but honestly. Leather is the most comfortable of them all. Yeah, I think we, we talked about leather sole last time. I think that's your, yeah, your also so, your yeah. choice. Yeah, it is. It is. It, it look, you know, obviously that's all personal preference, but it yeah. looks the best, you know. It looks the best. I mean, we're all wearing them here today. And, uh, I mean, Parker's wearing suede loafers with leather soles, and that's what he uh, is pulling pulling shoes with. And oh, yeah. Josh and oh, I, sorry. you know, <laughs> we're spending a lot of time up front, but even then, like... <laughs> In the winter time, I mean, we're still wearing these over Michigan. Well, Florida. what do you guys yeah. say to people that are, are freaked out by falling in inclement weather with leather soles? Is that is that a concern that you've ever heard? <laughs> I um, mean, I feel like I hear that a lot, and I don't sell shoes. I do think it takes a little getting used to. I can say my first pair uh, took a little getting used to at first, but I think you just learn to walk in them and be more aware of how you're stepping, what you're stepping on. Obviously, you're, if you're in the snow or ice, yeah. you know, walk slightly different than you probably would normally, but... Yeah, like you said, we wear I wear leather soles all winter and have never had too much of an issue with it. Yeah, we just gotta yet. teach these people to pivot turn. <laughs> yeah, gotta pivot turn. Yep. Show me how to show me how to do that. What right, you right. You know, like the roller skate step over. Right. That's that's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just take your time. You might. Uh, you, you know, don't rush. Just beautiful natural the new reason why they call it <laughs> pivot turn. So I know that you're used to this building, but for me, this is this is just a really beautiful shop you guys got but you were just telling me a bit of history exactly tell me about that again so the far side of this building actually used to be where the train station was for this town and the train actually came right along here where this building is now and uh, kind of where this section goes into the train actually stopped right against uh, a wall on the far side of the building and then obviously they built this warehouse and just kept adding on that's where we're at now all right we got them laid out here yeah. uh my haul of different <laughs> shoes and boots and stuff yeah exactly let's look at the oldest one first okay this is one of the uh one of the first six i think we had three plain toe shoes and uh three long wings yeah i think yeah six yeah. and so this was like pretty much one of the first ones yeah this is the french anime calf um the shoe that kicked it all off well yeah it was one of them and it's it was strange because like when we started we kind of thought we'd be making more of like a business casual line dress shoes a little bit you know dressy and and slowly as time went on we we kept the shoe but it's not even really one of our core products anymore you know i mean it, it, it just tends to be going towards boots more casual and not as dressy you know? what what year did you start making that guy this was I think sampled in you know 14, 15, and then I think we started selling shoes in 2016. So March. from from 2016 to 2021 now, yeah, the style has changed that dramatically. Uh, yeah, I don't. Maybe not. Maybe it's just like as well as our collection. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. we didn't. I mean, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, <laughs> so it was like, hey, we're making long wings playing toes. Like, if we're gonna do business casual, these are these are the best patterns, right? Right. It's like we have to do these, but it's just kind of more or less what the customer wanted and it was doing okay and stuff but then you introduce a new boot or like a plain toe boot and it's like well actually you know three times as many people want that boot than than this you know but it's it's also kind of the product of dressing up um calf versus you know chrome excel people know chrome excel it's friendly leather it's soft all that stuff so it's not maybe what i thought it would have been i see it's so interesting i'm wondering if you're similar to us because at ashland many of our products had been driven by our customers feedback right. so for example the fat herbie which i noticed a couple of you guys got fat herbies on you uh yep. the fat herbie was our original wallet and people wanted a little bit more of a smaller form factor so we developed the same aesthetic wallet just a little smaller right. and that wallet's now become the tony the ant we sell a lot of those mm -hmm. and many other products that we have have come about from that sort of idea is that how products come about for you guys also yeah, I think so. It seems like it's it's mainly, you know, we, you know, like to say that it's 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 like okay, this is what we like, and and you put it out there, but definitely when it starts performing or, or not performing, you know, you have to kind of make decisions based on that. So there's been certain shoes like the one that Josh was wearing, the the ivory suede 
loafer, like that's all one of our favorites. But ultimately, it was it's pretty difficult, pretty difficult to, to manage and stuff. And then it didn't sell well. It's difficult to restock it because mm -hmm. you know you have to you have to make eight pair of time. You know you can't you can't make thirty pair. It has a hard time going to the tannery and saying, hey, I need, I need three skins from England and to ship it to China. You know, so it, it's it's not very. Uh, feasible for a brass boot was that customer driven or was that something you guys were just excited about having i mean i probably a little bit of a combination because it's actually a strange enough boot that's not you wouldn't say it's it's something that people would say it's customer driven mm -hmm. because it looks like a work boot but it has like the the mock toe on it you guys had developed that pattern similar in the past and so they had resurrected one of randy and wyatt's patterns and added a couple features to it that they liked and thought would do well. And, and the as, sole you were pushing, right? Yeah, and the sole <laughs> I was pushing, exactly. Exactly. And yeah, as things move in waves, boots have seemed to stay pretty steady. And so, yeah, yeah added that brass boot, and it's definitely been performing well. That, that black Chrome Excel brass boot is top of the brass boots right now. So after that British tan long wing came out, did you have a sort of progression of where you were thinking to go next? Was it still kind of wanted to be a little business casual or do you want to go full blown casual? No, I mean, it, it, I would say it's all still kind of in the same realm. I mean, the main reason we started with one shoe as in like a, a, a long wing and a plain toe is because one set of last. We could use the leather on, on both of them. You know, we had a crimson long wing, so we're buying Havana Brown from, you know, from Horween. Can buy it for both the long wing and the plain toe and so it's kind of out of like necessity as well to kind of not have like 10 new products that are all different you know we probably couldn't do that was the diesel uh, boot your first boot that yeah we brought in just like we, we started plain toes and long wings first order second order was yeah ottawa boots and diesel boots probably three a piece just like that yeah look at that sole yeah <laughs> so it's is it all about <laughs> the sole and the mock toe that's the big the big difference well between and this and something like the the diesel and, uh, the toe box too wyatt and these guys developed this pattern and something similar and i believe it had a split on it back in the day so it took that split toe out of the moccasin pattern we decided to go with a couple of hooks speed hooks everyone has their own opinion on that matched up with that thick rubber lug sole yeah that's your like your dream sole <laughs> things aggressive yeah, you're pushing for it i'm definitely an outdoors kind of guy so you can hike you can visit the motocross tracks like we've done in the past and you can also dress it up my one, i have a pair of those and they are covered in mud at home right now i feel like the thoughtfulness behind the spacing of all the holes in the hooks yep. is very smart uh, and i've come to appreciate it more and more the the more i've worn these i didn't notice they actually had two on, on the brass boot which is actually even better so i think the two is like and the spacing of the two is very intelligent it makes me want to pick it up so what's a reason to pick up one boot over the other yeah i mean i guess a simple answer would be aesthetics you know like some people are going to say i want something that's a little more slim profile and the, the whole i guess it all stems from just the last so our leo last which the diesel is on the same exact last as this it's just got a back you know back part to it for for a boot but you know just the toe expression and everything you can tell that there's a big difference so for most customers i mean especially um that that are buying this type of boot you know they might think of this they might think of like your traditional like red wing heritage boot things like that more of like yeah. work oriented um where the diesel boots it's, it's a little more of like um they would consider it somewhat like a service boot which is it's in the middle of this like strange place of, of a boot that somebody would wear you know back in you know literally in the army back in, in the past or a, a dressage riding boot that's a lace-up boot but it doesn't have like this this tall toe box right? well let me let me actually yeah. since i'm wearing these right now i'll just pull off i'll just pull off one of them so i love this this boot that i just took off uh off my feet this is the uh, dune chrome excel so i've had these um since just after we last chatted wyatt yeah um i picked up a pair of those i love them especially right out of the box most comfortable out of the box pair I've ever had. I think awesome. I'm, we'll do a sizing video too, but I think that has a lot to do with how you sized me uh, for the proper fit. It's all personal preference a lot of times when it comes to this, because nowadays if, if someone looks at, especially a welted boot, they would literally consider it like a dress boot or something, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm 
speaking in general terms for average American, but you know, especially back then, you, or go back 40, 50 years ago, I mean, this is not acceptable for any type of dress wear, right? Boots aren't, period, realistically. You know, they, they weren't made for that. So now it's just, it's very open. You can wear it however you want. It's more about what type of look do you want? And so if you're looking at something like this, it's a little more business casual. It's more of a tapered toe, right? So like I said, you, you can make a dress business casual shoe out of this last. This is the same last. So, you know, it actually can look pretty sleek and just, can look like your traditional English American, uh, like brogue shoe. Where this, this last, I mean, that, that's the reason we created it really, it was just because it's more of your heritage workwear work boot. So taller, taller walls. And aside from the aesthetic differences of having a taller toe box, I mean, they're, they're made to give you more room in the toe box. Plus you'll have customers like emailing you saying, hey, look, um, I got this boot, it fits me and all that stuff. But I. I don't have a lot of room, like I have this problem with the whatever, the one toe, like I need more room in a toe box. Um, yeah. Traditionally, I mean, there's there's a couple of boots that do that really well. And you know, if we didn't have one, then you know, you, you say, well, this boot has a high, high toe box, you know? I was saying, thinking of like the Alden Indy boot, think of uh, more so like the Red Wings or some of the older Vibergs, or I mean, some of their last, they have very high toe box, right? So it's, it's really fit, you know? I mean, of course it looks different at the end of the day, but, uh, for some people, they start wearing this, it is a little more difficult to pull something like this off with business casual, right? Like chinos or- It's a work even, boot. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a little it's more work boot. Work you know? heritage. But, but nowadays, yeah, I mean, you wear whatever you want, right? There's like a crimson one in there too. Guys, guys will wear this with, with a jacket, you know, or whatever. So it, it's kind of a little more um, personal preference. And, and of course, um, I see what you're saying. So a little bit more, a little bit more tough on the brass boot, and I think the sole sort of indicates that also. Yeah. My only, la the last I can remember from you yeah. is called the Leo last. Right. It, the brass boot is, you know, now that we have them side by side, it can very quickly tell and easily tell the difference between the last shape here. Yeah. What is the name of the last for brass boot? This is the Floyd last. Is that a new last? <laughs> yeah, this was made just for this boot. Um, which, you know, we'll probably use it down the road on some other boots, things that, you know, you have that really high wall last. I mean, it's pretty obvious, you know, if, if you're using something like this, you, you kind of have to, you're going to be making probably more of a work boot style pattern uh, with this, you know, um, and, and that's how that'll work. A little but, bit more turned up toes slightly? Yeah, you'd think so. The toe spring is actually about the same. Uh, oh, interesting. Two, as in for the last, but it's just it's just the actual depth of the toe box. Like I was saying, you, you have some people who say, hey, look, I, I really want something like the toe box. I want it to be really a, a lot of volume. You know, I don't want to feel pressure anywhere. I wear thick socks and that's kind of, you know, they'll, they'll like that fit. They're actually very similar in the heel, uh, the instep. The ball is pretty close. As soon as you get past the ball a little bit more, this this is a little wider. For somebody like myself, if I already have a diesel boot yep. and I want to pick up, um, something in the Floyd last, like the brass boot. Yeah. I'm, the size is the same roughly. Yeah, and I mean, it, yeah. it should be, it okay. should be, but some people, <laughs> you know, because they'll have more room in the toes, you know, you, you think that the toe box is more, they'll, they'll size down, which, you know, that's, that's, it's personal kind of feeling. But yeah, all of us, we would, you yeah. know, you would say, hey, your, your, your heel to the ball is the same. So you should be, you should be wearing the same size, yeah. So we're looking on the table here with the long wing and the, the new brass boot. So this is, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the oldest the style next to the most recent style? Yeah, one of the most recent. The most, what's the most recent style? That's probably our new chuck -a boot So that one just come out, um, as well as some color ups. But yeah, this is probably second newest. Just come out with the uh, chuck -a boot which is a whole nother outsole, which is the uh, crepe outsole. Also pretty casual, also yeah. Also casual. So yeah. looking at that spectrum, is that the trend that you feel like Grant Stone is going towards? Is you know a little bit more booty, a little bit more casual? It just, I know we're only looking at two. Booty. This is not too much booty. booty. <laughs> I know two or three is not a trend, but is that the way you want to go? Do you have any sense of? No, I, I don't think so. I mean, it's, you know, at the same time, like, you know, the three of us are wearing, you know, penny loafers today. And so it's kind of like, yeah, you, you end up kind of doing more, but for sure, um, when it comes to dress shoes, we probably won't end up doing, I, I can't imagine having a, a, 
a very vast line of dress shoes. You know, um, first of all, you know, it's really not, for us, it's, we really have to test ourselves to make dress shoes. They're very difficult to make. Um, it really comes down to like finessing the shoes, the details, especially when you get into like Oxfords, this area here with the flat welts and the beveling. Um, it's, you have to be very, very good at it. And you should, you know, kind of have to do it day in, day out. Hmm. And we're doing a little bit more of like the business casual stuff. So um, you're dealing with a little bit heavier weight leathers, uh, thicker outsoles, um, I mean the last expressions altogether, and most people wouldn't necessarily look at our last and say they're very refined, narrow, elegant dress shoes, but they're not. Right. Even our, even our Oxford, um, it's kind of like the middle road, you know, it's not, um, doesn't have like a very, very sharp toe expression or something like that. So yeah, it's going to stick probably somewhere towards the center, you know, in that business casual. Um, I hope that we can have like the tassel loafers, the penny loafers, long wings, you know, good your well work boots, kind of the whole thing. You weren't lying. Everybody's <laughs> everybody's wearing yeah. loafers today. Suede loafers, is that? Suede penny loafers. Even uh, yeah. even Matt these, over here is these wearing are these some, summer shoes. Some loafers. Yeah. I'm the only one crazy enough to wear boots today. <laughs> but loafers are looking good, guys. It's warm out yeah. here in Michigan. We weren't too sure about these to start, but I wear them every single day. <laughs> And I was even telling White, are you sure on the penny pattern before the brass, before a few others? Yes. Yeah, they've been a good deal. You want to tell me more about the brass boot? Well, I just wanted to talk about, like, I just wanted to have a piece of this thrown in there that, you know, we named this Floyd Last. You know, we, we called that Floyd Last because that's why it's Grandpa's name, right? Mm -hmm. And why it's third generation shoe dog here. And so we had to... Uh, shine some light on Floyd where this whole thing started. Yeah. Now that probably would not have been his favorite pattern, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wasn't he also a loafer guy? Yes. Yeah, he was a shell penny loafer guy, right? Yeah, that's, that's it. Shell loafers. The, yeah, that's all he wore, the, the, the Brooks Brothers, the Brooks Brothers penny loafer, yeah. The last 10 years I think I've seen him, he was wearing his shell pennies. Yeah, yeah. Color eight. But he did like the Alden Indy boot a lot. So yeah. he didn't wear them. He didn't. True. He didn't wear boots, but he loved that boot. So yeah, he didn't wear. Them. Well, he said he he hurt his leg like when he was in the service. When he was like twenties or something, thirties, twenties. He was working all in his thirties, but yeah. So when he's really young, and so he never wore boots. Yeah. I I gotta tell you, yeah. I saw this boot, and I don't know how you probably sold this for a while. I don't know why I just saw it, but I, <laughs> I saw this boot a couple weeks ago, and I love this. And somebody had mentioned to me this concept of, of framing. And I think that's what I see on this that I like. Is I look at how the welt is sort of framing off the black chrome excel on here. And I've wanted black chrome excel. I, have, I don't own any black boots. I really want to pick up a pair of these. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign up on your, uh, your, your sign-up sheet for, yep. to notify me when these are back in stock. Exactly. I think this is a, a total stunner. Um, and I noticed you don't have... A ton of diesel boots with leather soles. Yeah. Is that correct? I think that's our only one right now. Hmm. There's another story there. And the saddle tan is, the, the, is actually one of our best performing boots, and that one's a leather sole, the diesel. But oh, yeah. it's like, yeah, we, when we started, so that was the first three years, the first six shoes were leather sole. And then, so yeah, the grand idea, which blew up really quick, was uh, in the first six boots. Yeah, blew up in, in a bad way, I mean. Um, was that, yeah, we wanted to go leather sole like everything. Like mm -hmm. We really wanted leather sole everything. Um, and because it was big, a small program, and, you know, it didn't have to be, you know, didn't have to carry everything. But it was just like, as soon as we made our boots, all of them were on leather sole, including like the, the Havana Brown, the Crimson, and all that stuff. But uh, it was just immediately like our existing customers from that first year or two were just like, please make this thing on a rubber sole. I know? see. And so it was just like overwhelming you know the majority are just like i really want another pair or i really want this or that but i i you know need a rubber sole you know and so yeah that that was definitely a big part of that push um and we couldn't stock everything like every single one of the same boots same color and two different options so we decided to pick and choose which one we want to keep with leather this one was actually added on later we discontinued it for a while but kind of agreed with uh, your assessment you know that that contrast of the black and, and natural weld stain it's beautiful it's hard to beat it you know yeah, it is. it's hard to beat that so you know we have the shoe like that and then the boot you know it's 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 hard to beat 
with can I leather sole. Can I expect to see any more leather sole diesel boots or even the brass boot come in? Well, so far with the brass, no, but I mean, we just placed an order this last week and uh, it'll be another Ottawa boot with like a, a real light um, Minerva from Battalassi, a veg tan leather with a leather double bend sole, which is like top to bottom, like this natural leather color, you know? So it's pretty, it's pretty solid, but yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll keep them coming a little bit, but it's, we'll hold a pre-order and like you could have an option or something, but it's overwhelmingly, you know, people want rubber sole. So Interesting. We want yeah. to keep that culture yeah. and that heritage of that leather sole, but yeah. Yeah, power in numbers. No, this is a uh, forest kudu. I forget the name that CF said calls the uh, the color itself. Um, very, very dark green. So it's the oiled waxed kudu and it's got some good pull up there. You have some pretty good pull up. Obviously you need to get the scars and all that stuff on it. So your typical kudu, but the color itself, I mean, some people, especially if they're at home and they get it, they're kind of like, hey, I didn't, I didn't order a black kudu. You know, um, it's dark. I ordered the green. Yeah, so it is dark. But when you wear it outside or something, it's it's very very clear. It's kind of like that forest, like dark dark green. You know, so yeah, really really uh, pretty cool boot. You know, it has a natural welt and everything, so you still have that high contrast. Oh, I see why you wanted me to have it because you think it's some people think it's black. So, ah, yeah. I got so, you. Yeah. We, okay. Yeah. Thing. So I get my same framed look. Yeah. Now. Exactly. Yep. Um, and so yeah. Sorry. No, it's a rubber sole, not leather. But uh, no, it's it's. The good thing with the kudu, though, honestly, is it, it feels like if you dry his clothes, it almost feels more like a suede. It's, it stretches a lot. So you put your foot in there and it's not, it doesn't have that like, super tight fiber. It has kind of a, a more loose fiber, uh, longer fiber type of feel. So. And this is a stead leather. Yeah, a stead, yeah. I'm most familiar with stead from their suede. I can very yep. obviously tell this is a grain. Yep. Is this sort of like the grain out suede that they normally would do? Or are you familiar? Uh, no. Well, no, this is like the actual African antelope kudu. Oh, cool. And so yeah. like Rapello suede, which we use of theirs, that's just calf suede. Um, and they have Janus Button suede, uh, which is, that's the actual reverse side suede nap. And then they have the full grain on the other side, which people will use without lining. Uh, but no, this is like the actual kudu animal. Um, what, what which would they, you... they do reverse kudu. We have one of those coming as well. Yeah. What would you say is the, uh, the difference in character on the kudu stuff for between this and like a steer or any bovine like type of stuff? Well, you don't have the full, I mean, the size of the hides themselves are gonna be a little smaller. Um, honestly, when it comes to thickness, it gets pretty close, but it's different. Like it has the thickness, but the weight's not there. You know how like, especially you look at Chromex style, you get some of those steers where, you know, you have the selection for belts or something that's really, really gutsy. This is like thick, but it's airy. It's not as dense. So again, it has that stretch and, and everything to it. It really reminds you of like a suede when you're wearing it just because it stretches a little bit. So yeah, it has the thickness. I think this is, we order it like 1.8 to 2.0, which is the same as what we ordered Chrome Excel for. But if you wear the two, and Chrome Excel is already considered to be very forgiving and soft, this is even more so. I'd say this is a really nice looking sort of rugged vibe, more rugged than a steer hide. I, to be honest with you, this is like the first time I've seen the actual Kudu in person. And it's much more grainy than um, any bovine that I've seen. It almost has similar characteristics to horse, but like it's more, it's almost more pebbled. Uh, and maybe it's just because I'm looking at the quarter that hasn't been lasted as tightly as around here, where this, the toe and, and the rest of the upper here. No, you're right. It's, it's not still, smooth. if you look at the height, it's not smooth. It's, not it's still grainy though. Right. It's like very. It's not as, it's more, a little bit more pebbly up in the, uh, the part that's not lasting. It definitely has a very light pebble grain throughout, throughout the whole hide. And, you know, like it's nice. Said, yeah, it pulls out on the, on the toe, but, um, yeah, it has that. And of course, like the scars and stuff, I mean, yeah, they're, they're prominent. They're all over the place. You so. do see a lot more of those, uh, yeah. little bits of imperfections, which I think are what makes it special. Yeah. And, and we, we, we do yeah. bad breaks with that. Yeah. Right. They you tend know, to be a that, tighter. The vamp breaks, you know, everyone's always focused and worried about that we, we don't hear too many um negatives about that at least not with this article the best way that i can think of to explain is to describe like what's actually happening when you see looseness in this sort of pebbly pipey pattern you tend to see that in some of the areas of the hide that are more used by the animals like in your armpit like you're moving this around a lot 
Same with your legs. Like yeah. those parts of the skin for the animals get, belly. yeah, like yeah. the bellies too, actually, surprisingly. Exactly. Yeah. They tend to be more fibrous and like opened up where like the backbone is like really tight. It's like your oh. tenderloin is tender because it's not getting that much action. And it's the same kind of idea for the hides where you don't flex as much, you're not gonna get as much uh, open fibers. But what's happening is when you have those fibers that are less like pulled together, a little less tight, the grain layer on top can separate out a little bit more easily. And that's what the piped look is, those mm -hmm. like coarse bits of patterning. But what's interesting here is it's almost like the lasting has like helped this become tighter. So you can really see like how, um, how pebbly it is on the quarters and then like how tight it looks on the toes. Parker, what's the process like for pack out? You know, what, you yeah. know, you're sort of the last line of defense, right? Exactly, yeah, just looking at everything, making sure it's all good before it goes out. But obviously in our packaging, we have a few little cards for you and um, someone will sign it with whoever inspects it. We got your extra laces. This is a loafer, so it doesn't have the extra laces, but got a little shoehorn bottle opener in there for everybody, extra set of shoe bags and a little polishing cloth here for the packaging. But uh, yeah, so this is our bourbon suede oh, penny nice. loafer. Someone, this is actually, uh, someone just ordered. This is what I'm familiar with this, with uh, stud. Yeah, so this is actually what I'm wearing right now. Super comfortable shoe, but. Headed what, to Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas, yeah, this is for someone right now going out today. But first thing I do is just kind of looking at the symmetry, looking down at the pattern, the stitch and everything, making sure everything's clean, everything's symmetrical from shoe to shoe. And then uh, we always check for nails uh, during the construction. There's some nails and staples put in here, hold everything together. So obviously don't want any of that being left over. Someone puts that on them, I hurt a little bit. So always inspect for those, feel the inside, make sure the, the insole feels right. There's nothing poking anywhere, anything that's gonna feel uncomfortable to who's wearing it. And then yeah, looking at the symmetry, looking at the stitching all the way around, um, just making sure everything looks good. Uh, stitching on the bottom and the outsoles. Uh, yeah, and then obviously every once in a while, you know, there'll be a little something like that where uh, the suede was just during yeah, packaging. Show, me, show was, me what that looks like. So this is something so yeah. that you want to upgrade a little yeah, bit. Yeah, something. Against the yeah, as it rested, you know, obviously during shipping when it came to the warehouse, it might have gotten bumped up a little bit. So I'll take a little suede brush, touch those areas up a little bit, make sure everything looks good. And do you have to treat uh, non-suede leather a little differently if you're trying to polish stuff up or? Uh, it just depends. So uh, if this was like a Chrome Excel pair or something, we uh, have our polishing wheel over there. So I'll just polish it up really good before it goes out. So yeah, belt obviously would be fine to send. It's great shape. After inspection, hit the wheel. Usually just roll it up as we're uh, polishing. And Oh. Yeah, let's see. A little extra shine to it. Put a little zip on that one? Put a little zip on that one. You could always add a little Venetian cream or something here, but I don't think this one needs it. Yeah, and that's what I'll use too if we get a, uh, like one of our Chrome Excel pairs or something that has a little nick in it or something, take a little Venetian cream. Um, these little bamboo sticks are a godsend. We got mm. these from our factory, but these are perfect. You have a little divot in your Chrome Excel. Obviously, it's a very soft leather. We can get out with that. Um, if there's a little, you know, if we get a return and someone tried it on, there's a little fingernail mark or something, put a little Venetian cream in there and just rub it out with this. Oh, I've yeah. seen these made out of bone. Exactly. Uh, so they're we called have bone our, uh, folders, right? So here's one of our really old deer bones. We've used this one forever. I don't know if this was the original one that yeah. we've had for years, but uh, yeah, so obviously, you know, if we were to get a pair like this, you know, this is a pair that's been a little worn. That's why we have deer bones. You can help get that. I think those are mine. Bit. Yeah, this is your pair right here. <laughs> but you can take this, throw some Venetian cream on there, and just really, really get into that. Really rub that out and straighten that out. And it just helps with a lot with the break and the creasing and stuff, and makes it look a little, a little fresher. So you guys do a lot more than just put shoes in boxes here. And yes. Them yeah. No, we're always, we're always making sure everything's looking good. So. And Randy. Wyatt's dad, he's definitely helping a lot with our fulfillments right now, and Parker and him are spearheading that. Mm -hmm. So they're doing a good job. Yeah, is that Randy you. doing the, is that what you were saying earlier, that Randy does all the final QC? Yeah, so generally he's doing this, and uh, and then when he's golfing, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been wearing these Dune Chrome Excel long wings 
off and on for the last year or so. I can't believe how good these look because I haven't done, I haven't polished these. I've sort of just worn them, maybe giving you a look at the, the sole, uh, but I haven't really done anything to the upper. I may have brushed it once or twice, but uh, these are looking great. So when you see this, what do you, what are you feeling like it needs to, how does this need to be improved? Chrome Excels obviously have oil and, and wax impregnated into that upper, so it's not really all that dry. So we'll always throw a little Venetian balm. Neutral works, it won't dye your lighter colored stitching around the well. Feed the leather, hydrate the leather a little bit as you've worn it through the rain and the moisture and the dry days and things, you know, all that wax will surface. And so, you know, you can polish, you can brush, remove the dirt, probably what you do right off the bat, remove some of the dirt. See, for me, like that's normally like the end of it. Maybe I'm just lazy, but uh. And that, I mean, that is totally works and that's practical and the shoes still look great. It's just more so what do you want to see out of it and every month or two, throw a little neutral Venetian on the upper. Do you ever use, the, what do you use the colors for other than neutral? You know, if you have black, blacks on black, that works. We use neutral on a lot of colors because it, it works as well. And when we have that lighter color outsole stitching, you know, you get a little bit of Venetian cream on that well. Not gonna darken it. Not gonna dye your stitch brown. So I just put <laughs> a bunch of Venetian on there to prove my point. I'll add a little more Venetian to the upper all together. You try to lather this up evenly, disperse that balm evenly. Because I never think to do the welt, but I guess it makes sense. It's because you're kicking things mm -hmm. and it's drying out as it kicks, and you know the colors slightly change. And so, yeah, a little neutral Venetian never hurt. You know, sometimes if you've if you have a, a harder roll, these these this has a really nice clean break. But like Parker was saying, you know, you can always polish that with that deer. You know bone. what's funny about that is I think I bought these as uh, bee stocks from you. Really? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, to me, I couldn't, like you said, the people probably can't really outsole, tell. Probably had an outsole stitching. It's like perfect Chrome Excel on a, a B stock. So I guess I got lucky. Bring it to the wheel and we have, we have our black wheel for darks. We have our browns and naturals over here. We like to put some shoe trees in to start. So it has a little bit of a base. You can work it into a little bit. And then pop that wheel. We're sparkling. Yeah, definitely sparkling. So you can see some of the perfs, and it's not a. This is not a mirror shine. It's not gonna. You know, I'm not using a, a polish, a wax to shine the leather. This is more so to feed the leather, hydrate the leather. And with that brush, you can get into those perfs and start to break down some of that leftover Venetian cream. That is really impressive, actually. So, I've I've had issues with mock toes where they start to look, the mock toe itself is a white stitch starts yeah. to look dirty. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see that you can avoid that. Yeah, and even if you use a firmer bristle and and use it on, you know, don't don't scrape your leather, but you know, work that work that stitch with a little firmer brush than horsehair, and yeah, you can kind of lighten it up probably and then use a little Venetian and work on top of that. Here we go, it's starting, all the, all the perfs are looking cleared out. You'll still see a little white in there, but that'll dry up and that'll be fine. And then here you are, hydrated upper. Looks great, man, good job. Yeah, once a month, once a quarter, so. These long wings, they were looking pretty good before, but Josh, you did such a good job, this is like, looks brand new to me <laughs> thank you so much and thank you guys for uh allowing us to come hang out with you today yeah it's been such a pleasure to see just this incredible uh operation you guys have going and it's been five years now is that is that right yeah five years yeah congratulations yeah. on five years yeah, you're halfway years. caught up to us and uh you're in a much larger space than us so uh, i think you're winning <laughs> welcome, welcome anytime I really appreciate it. Yeah, we we yeah. really want to come back and do a, a sizing video 
I think it'd be really helpful um, for myself to know if I'm currently wearing the uh, right size diesel boots and maybe pick up those black diesel boots that of I course. want. So maybe we'll come back and talk to Randy, hear some of those famous Randy stories and get size together. So, Sounds good. Yeah. Thank, thanks awesome. again, guys. Yeah, of course, yeah, thank, it's been yeah, awesome. Thanks yeah, thanks guys. for coming.